Hello, in this example we're going to examine the strength of a W section used as a tension member. The problem asks us to determine the strength of a W10 by 60 made out of A992 steel. The W section is connected at its ends through two gusset plates, one on each flange, and each of the gusset plates is connected to its flange using two columns of five three-quarter inch diameter bolts. Let's get started. These types of connections are common in bridge type structures, and although I'm working this example using the AISC specification, which doesn't apply to bridges, this bridge is a good example of how these connections are made. This is a simple pony truss bridge in rural Ohio, uh, and uh, there's some 800 of these bridges still in the state of Ohio. As you can see, each of these members is connected to its adjacent members through the use of two gusset plates, one on each flange, and the gussets are each bolted to the uh, connected flange of their member. Here's another view of the same truss, and as you can see, the uh, connections are made through the flanges of the W shape, but there is no attachment to the web of the W shapes. Here's another example of a W shape connected through its flanges. In this case, we're looking at the bracing member framing in from the right to a base plate with a column. And that bracing member is connected to the uh, two gusset plates with two columns of six bolts in each one of the two joints. And here's another view of a similar connection, probably in the same building. So there are two strength limit states that we need to consider. One is gross section yielding or tension yielding. The other is a net section fracture or tension rupture, as AISC puts it. We'll start off by examining the gross section yielding and the nominal strength P sub N is taken as F sub Y times A sub G, the yield strength of the material times the gross area of the section. To determine the yield strength that we're using in these calculations, we look at Table 2-4 out of the 16th edition of the AISC Steel Construction Manual. Zooming in a little bit, you can see that for a W shape, the preferred material is A992, and the yield strength, F sub Y, is 50 KSI, and that the tensile stress, F sub U, is 65 KSI. Now we go to chapter one of the AISC manual to look up the section properties of the W10 by 60. And zooming in a little bit, you can see that the cross-sectional area, A sub G, is 17.7 .7 inches squared for the W10 by 60. So now we can calculate the nominal strength with respect to gross section yielding, which is 50 KSI times 17.7 .7 inches squared or 885 kips. Applying the resistance factor of 0.9 for gross section yielding, we see that we have a design strength of 796.5 kips. Next, we'll examine the strength limit state of a net section fracture or tension rupture. The nominal strength P sub N is taken as F sub U times A sub E, the ultimate stress times the effective net area, where A sub E is taken as U times A sub N, the shear lag reduction coefficient times the net area. Looking at the net area first, we'll take A sub N as A sub G minus the area of the holes, the gross area of the member minus the area of the holes that's lost due to the fabrication uh, of the holes for the bolts. The area of the holes is taken as the effective diameter of each hole times the thickness of the flange through which it was drilled. And you can see here that we have four holes that were drilled in the uh, net section that we're considering. Going back to the tables in chapter one of the manual, you can see that for a W10 by 60, the flange has a thickness of 0 0.680 inches. So now we can calculate the net area, A sub N, as 17.7 .7 inches squared, the gross area of the member, minus four holes. Each hole accommodates a three quarter inch diameter bolt. The hole is 1 16th inch larger than the bolt, and we add another 16th of an inch to accommodate material that's damaged around the perimeter of the hole during fabrication. 
multiply by the flange thickness of 0 0.680 inches, and ultimately we're left with a net area, A sub N, equal to 15.32 inches squared. The next step is to consider shear lag reduction. To determine the shear lag reduction coefficient, we go to table D3.1 of the 2022 AISC specification. Here we can see that two different cases apply to our situation. The first is case two, where we use U equal to one minus X bar over L. And the second is case seven, where we use U either equal to 0.9 or 0.85, depending on the ratio of the breadth of the flanges to the depth of the section. We'll examine case seven first. And since our flanges are connected with more than three bolts in the direction of loading, if B sub F is greater than two thirds times D, we can take U equal to 0.9. Or if B sub F is less than two thirds times D, then we can take U equal to 0.85. So when we check B sub F, which equals 10.1 inches against two thirds times D, D equal to 10.2 inches, we see that the first inequality is satisfied. And thus we could take U equal to 0.90. If we now consider case two from table D3.1, we see that U would be taken as one minus X bar over L. In this equation, X bar is the connection eccentricity and L is the length of the joint at the end of the member. If we take a look at the joint length first, you can see that L would be the distance from the first bolt to the last bolt in the joint at the end of the member. If we take the bolt spacing as three inches from center to center, then the total length would be L equals four times three inches or 12 inches. Generally, X bar is taken as a connection eccentricity, which is often measured from the centroid of the member to the fang surface of the connection. However, in this case, since the W section is connected only through its flanges, we don't use this case directly. Instead, what we do is we break that W section into two WTs and consider the eccentricity of each one of those Ts. So a W10 by 60, if it were split in half, would be two WT5 by 30s. And the value of X bar that we use in determining the shear lag reduction coefficient is taken from the centroid of one of the WT5 by 30s to the fang surface of that T. Now we'll refer back to chapter one of the AISC manual and look up the properties for a WT five by 30. Zooming in a little bit and looking at the properties for the WT five by 30, you could see that the distance from the outside flange to the centroid of the section is tabulated as 0 0.884 inches. Note that using the notation in chapter one, it's actually tabulated as Y bar, but this does correspond to the connection eccentricity X bar in the shear lag reduction equation. So now we can calculate U as one minus 0 0.884 inches divided by 12 or 0 0.9263. Now considering both case two and case seven, we're permitted to take the larger value of U from both of those two cases. So we'll use U equal to 0 0.9263. And now we can calculate the nominal strength with respect to a net section fracture. And what we find is that P sub N is equal to 922.4 kips. Applying the resistance factor of 0.75 for a net section fracture, we see that the design strength is 691.8 kips. So in summary, we have a design strength of 796 kips for gross section yielding or tension yielding. And we have a design strength of 691 kips for a net section fracture or tension fracture. So the lower of these two strengths governs. So a net section fracture will control the strength of this member. And our available strength is phi times P sub N equal to 691 kips.